Air pollution is hard to see, and that's why it's often hard to pinpoint sources and trends to develop effective solutions. Regional pollution monitors are the norm in developed countries to help measure whether the air is healthy to breathe. These stationary monitors are often expensive and provide important information about the overall quality of air across a large area. In contrast, in developing countries, there may be few or even zero monitors to measure air quality, limiting a community's knowledge of health risks for the population. New sensor technology is changing that dynamic, allowing us to measure and map pollution concentrations block by block, and identify patterns and pollution spikes or hotspots like never before. Hyperlocal monitoring allows for a more holistic picture of air quality at a high spatial resolution and frequency. Measuring on-the-ground pollution can support a better understanding of the true exposure and health impacts of air pollution. In turn, the data can lead to targeted policy solutions or advanced regulatory actions. If you're considering a pollution research project that will benefit from hyperlocal monitoring, we've got some insights to share before you choose an approach to monitoring the air. First, you must identify which pollutant or pollutants to study based on existing air quality data. So how do you decide? Consider where you're starting from. If you don't have any air quality monitoring, it may make sense to start with a few high-quality federal reference method, FRM monitors, especially if your goal is to advance regulatory actions. If you're designing a hyper-local air monitoring network, your first key decision is to choose between mobile sensors and stationary sensors, or whether you create a hybrid network that combines the two to meet your goals. Lower-cost stationary sensor networks and mobile mapping on the other hand, can supplement existing reference-grade equipment or serve as an alternative to reference monitoring systems for cities with limited capacity. But no matter where you're starting, the monitoring strategy should be targeted to collect the kind of data needed to answer specific questions about your air quality. Remember, your goals should guide your design. Before you consider what monitors to buy, you should develop clear and firm project goals what does your monitoring need to accomplish and for whom? Monitoring and measuring can produce data, either general or specific, that can create awareness and urgency around pollution sources. The data can also be used to support new pollution control policies and public health programs. So ask yourself or your team, are you seeking a general survey of what air pollution exists in your city? Are you looking to measure pollution in a certain neighborhood on a block-by-block -block level? Are you trying to measure the impact of a discrete event or site, such as the construction of an industrial plant in a residential neighborhood, or the expansion of a roadway or airport, or an intervention aimed at improving air quality, such as low emission zones? In this case, a before and after measurement would be key to showing impact. Develop clear project goals before you determine which approach is best for you. Common monitoring goals and objectives can be found on our website, under Innovative Air Quality Monitoring. You'll also find a free downloadable how-to guide to the recommended expertise needed on your team to complete a project. Learn more at globalcleanair.org.